Given f of x is equal to x plus 2 squared by x minus 3 squared by x minus 5, solve f of x equals 0, f of x is greater than 0, and f of x is less than 0. So first thing we'll notice is that this is a polynomial equation, a polynomial function, and it's in its completely factored form. So to solve f of x equals 0, all we need to do is to look at the three factors. If x plus 2 equals 0, that means that x equals negative 2. If x minus 3 is 0, x equals 3. And if x minus 5 equals 0, that means that x equals 5. So our solution for the first statement, f of x equals 0, would be the set containing negative 2, 3, and 5. Now to solve the related inequalities, we could either use a sign chart or a sketch of the function. Let's look at the sign chart first. For the sign chart idea, I would place those three important values, those three solutions of the equation on the number line, and I would test values in each interval in the, inequality, uh, in the function. So let's just say I chose negative 4. Well then negative 4 plus 2 would be a negative number, but that's being squared. Negative 4 minus 3 would also be a negative number, and that's being squared. And then I have negative, and then I have, what else? Uh, negative 4 minus 5, well that's also a negative number. A negative number squared is positive, a negative number squared is positive, and then we still have this negative. Positive times a positive times a negative is negative. Choosing a number between negative 2 and 3, how about 0? 0 plus 2 is positive, when that's being squared. 0 minus 3 is negative and that's being squared, and then I have 0 minus 5, which is negative. So this would give me a positive times a positive times a negative, which is again a negative. Choosing a value between 3 and 5, let's say 4. 4 plus 2 is positive, and that's being squared. 4 minus 3 is positive, and that's being squared. And 4 minus 5 is negative. So that gives me a positive times a positive times a negative, which is again negative. And finally, the last interval, let's just say we choose 6. That would give me 6 plus 2, that's a positive number being squared. 6 minus 3 is a positive number, and that's being squared. And 6 minus 5 is a positive. So I have a positive times a positive times a positive, which is a positive. So now I can solve the related inequalities. Where is the function greater than 0? Well, the function is greater than 0 only on this interval, the last interval, where we ended up with a positive value for the function. So it's greater than 0 on the interval 5 to infinity. Where is the function less than 0? Well, it's less than 0 on all the parts where we got negatives. And it's equal to 0 at all of those um, boundary values, the solutions of the equation from the first part. So f of x is less than or equal to 0 on the interval negative infinity to 5. And we would bracket the 5. Now if you wanted to solve this graphically, we would what we would do is sketch the function. Now we know we know it has x-intercepts at negative 2, 3, and 5. We know that this is a degree 5 polynomial. So our n behavior, since the lead coefficient is positive, our n behavior is down up. Alright, so I know my n behavior is down up. Since I have a x plus 2 square, that means at negative 2, it's a 0 of multiplicity 2, it bounces off. So it hits the x-intercept, but doesn't pass through, it bounces off. x minus 3 square, it comes up, it bounces off again. x minus 5, that's a multiplicity 1, it passes through. So then you could apply the same ideas. 
Where is the function greater than zero? Well, the function is greater than zero here where the outputs are positive, and so we would take that part of the number line. Where are the outputs less than zero or equal to zero? Everywhere else in this case. And so we would shade that part of the number line.